Public Planning Commission. I'd like the members of this body to introduce themselves, starting at my far left. Ian Barra. <laughs> Jeff Chase. Jim Allison, Mayor. Clyde Esbury. Tim Twain, Planning Director. Rebecca Black. Sarah Mullally. David Fulton, City Commission. Gary Casada. <clears throat> and let me take a moment to welcome Rebecca as our newest member. Welcome aboard. You. Hopefully you enjoy it. That moves us along to our let me, first. Let me, let me instruct it's, it's some of the Planning Commission members. We now have a new sound system, and it is very sensitive, so you don't need to put your face up to it anymore. <laughs> you can usually just let it go. And it'll I see. Up. It's very loud. Yeah, that it is. All right, I'm looking for the approval of the minutes from the March 10th, 2015 meeting. So moved. Support. Motion by Mr. Chase, supported by Mayor Ellison. Any corrections, additions, deletions? Not seeing any, I will call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That moves us on to our first item of new business, item D1, which is a public hearing SP150411, <coughs> site plan to construct an accessory off-street parking lot for the grocery store holiday market, located at 212 through 216 East Harrison Avenue. Mr. Twig. Uh, this item was originally in front of you uh, at your August 12, 2014 meeting, um, where it was approved. Uh, it's back in front of you this evening because of one primary change between this plan and that one. Uh, it's still proposed to be a surface parking lot uh, constructed on the parcel between Harrison and Parent. Uh, it has 136. Uh, parking spaces. Uh, the primary difference between this site plan and the prior one is that the prior site plan contemplating the, the vacation of a portion of Delaware, Delaware Avenue from Harris, Harrison to Parent does not go all the way through. Uh, it's only about a half to a little more than a half of it is a public right of way from Harrison uh, south, uh, so it doesn't extend through. As part of the prior plan, uh, the petitioner was going to submit a petition to vacate the, that property. Under this plan, their proposal is to actually dedicate a portion of the property they own on the plan that I have depicted on the screen. It would be this portion along the uh, east side of the parcel uh, so that Delaware Avenue could actually be opened uh, from Harrison uh, to Parent and paved at some point in the future. Uh, that's the primary change uh, 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 between the plans. Uh, in terms of the contingencies, um, the change is that, that that dedication now occur and that any of the landscaping depicted on the landscaping plan proposed there be installed along with the uh, surface parking lot. Other than that, as I said, the layout of the surface lot and the other um, screening, setbacks, and things is the same. Uh, so basically, the green belt along the east side of the property uh, would be reduced to approximately uh, four feet of, four and a half feet of private property. Uh, the rest would be out in the public right-of-way of what would be a future uh, Delaware Avenue versus having no roadway through there uh, under the old plan. Uh, so other than that, our contingencies are standard contingencies uh, listed in the staff report. Uh, any questions for staff at this point? Not seeing any. Is the petitioner present? Evening, gentlemen. Hello. Use yourselves for the record if you would, and uh, tell us about your plan. All right. Tom Violante. Uh, Craig Mangold. Um, after, as Tim said, after we really studied the plan, the connectivity f to go from Kenilworth to Parent was far more important um, than extra, having the vacated and more land. So we had a collaborative meeting with Tim and for Matt. All right, let, me, let me stop you here, Tom. You, Kenilworth to Parent, you're talking Harrison to Parent, aren't you? Yes. I, yes. I am. I am. I am. Okay, Thank I you. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Um, but it, but we all right. So so with that, we had a collaborative meeting, um, and we came up with this plan, thinking it was a better plan for the community. 
<laughs> How much more to that? I was going to say, that's yeah. pretty simple. Any questions for the uh, petitioner at this point? All right, not seeing any. If I can ask no, you there's a question here. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. Um, so I, when I saw this was coming back, I was curious if you decided to um, uh, ins decide to install some green infrastructure as part of the parking plan that we talked about last time, um, but that's not part of this plan. Um, that was between our, I. I didn't get involved with that. That was our engineer talking to Matt, and this is what their agreement was. I, I didn't put one tree in that plan. I, I don't know what the, what the agreement was. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Not taking any. I'm going to ask you, gentlemen, to take a seat real quickly so I can open up the public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to address the Planning Commission on this issue? Ms. Lanfair. <laughs> I don't even have to say it. you know the rules. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of do. It's <laughs> been here before. Uh, good evening. Um, just want to say hello to all of you, and, and I want to thank all of you for your service on this board. I know that this is no piece of cake, that it takes a lot of time. So uh, my name is Eileen Lanfear. I live at 309 California. Um, I've uh, lived there for on California Street for 53 years now, so obviously my history with Holiday Market goes back a long time. Um, all, six of my seven children worked at Holiday Market. In fact, Tom C. Senior likes to say that he helped raise my family. <laughs> and my uh, oldest daughter, in fact, was the first female bagger at Holiday Market. So, <laughs> um, just I, I'm with the Wendland Park Neighborhood Association um, that is uh, a part of this whole neighborhood. And um, we really think this is a really great plan, particularly with the street open from Harrison to Parent. That's, that really does help the traffic flow in our neighborhood. It isn't as important as it used to be when the schools were open, the people had to get through, but it still is, is a very important thing. And I think what we're really looking forward to is um, cl cleaning up some of the parking issues that we have. We know how important this business is to our community. We, it's a very successful business and um, ha, you know has a lot of value for us and of course the mangold and the uh, Violati families are such an important part of our community as well such great philanthropists so just want to make sure that that we recognize that as part of this whole process so what but as far as the neighborhood is concerned we have issues with um, employees parking on the, on the street at this point. And I know that part of your goal as a planning commission is to ensure that when businesses present a plan to you, that there is sufficient parking such that it doesn't impact um, the, the, other, the rest of the businesses or the area. So um, the fact that this, this parking will address a lot of that parking uh, is really important to us. Um, I, I just hope there was there's some way that we can ensure that they don't get <laughs> even more business. It's hard enough to find a parking place when you go into their lot right now and I shop there all the time but um, but certainly we we're looking forward to um, having the parking that is currently on Kenilworth and on Delaware uh, now be able to park um, in the uh, in th this new parking area so thank you great thank you very much is there anybody else who would like to address the planning commission on this matter not seeing anybody I will close the public hearing and bring it back to this side of the table for a discussion or a motion is the intent right now just to um, dedicate the right of way? There's no plans to put a road in there right now at this point, is there? Or is there? Um, I, I'm not going to say right now, um, but in the near future. Yeah, so the plan in front of us doesn't include any kind of road design or anything. So that's, that's, we, if we ever get to that point, then we need to have some input on that. Because I know one of the original problems we had with opening that up was, was truck traffic. And I think it can be mitigated by how we design the road that goes through there. So, but if we're not worrying about the road, I'm not going to worry about that tonight. Any other questions? Just Mr. that Chase. would come back before us, right? With the the design of the road? Yes. No. no. That's a city commission matter, isn't it? Uh, well, really, the design of the road is simply done through engineering, a standard layout and design. Okay, well, then I'm, I, then I'm going to go on the record and say my concerns are with the, if, the, if the road is, is too wide, we're going to start getting semi trucks coming off of uh, Harrison and cutting through. So I'd like to see the road designed at least narrowly, narrowly or with uh, with reduced um, access or turning radius, turning radiuses or whatever to make it difficult for a truck to get through. I have, uh, it's great that we have the cars be able to go through there, but if we can do anything, mitigate semi trucks and heavy traffic going through <coughs> there off the Harrison truck route, I think that'd be good. Well, I guess I do have one quick question. Mr. Violante, if you could, could you come to the microphone and just 
quickly discuss, you know, what kind of plan you plan on implementing to address the concerns of employees parking in the street? Well, this is essentially going to be an employee parking lot. So what we're going to do um, on the gates, we're going to have um, employee badges, and then they're going to swipe in. So the whole this this was a conversation we had with Jim, and he said uh, we needed holiday parking. He says you got to find a place to park these you know cars. So that's what the whole point of this whole project is. Excellent. And I have no problem with uh, working yeah, with Yeah, I'm street. sure you would. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can put a no no truck um, going for right turn only things like that. Uh, yeah, there's, there's ways we can do it and yeah. still keep the road accessible for the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we don't okay. want we don't want trucks going. Down. Okay, and I think all of us up here understand that. But just to get it on the records for everybody at home and so forth, I appreciate that. Mr. Bolton, I move approval of the site plan. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Bolton, supported by Mr. Chase. Any additional discussion on this motion? Not seeing any, I will call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? All right. <laughs> <laughs> and now a whole bunch of signs. That moves us on to our first sign variance, which is sign variance 150403, a sign variance request to reface an existing freestanding sign and convert a changeable copy panel into an electronic message center for automobile wash, a supercar wash located at 31295 Woodward Avenue. Mr. Twing. Uh, well, as the report indicates, they are um, simply re re refacing a, a, an existing sign configuration. Uh, the sign, the freestanding sign is exists and is pictured uh, is too tall. It's some 28 feet, 8 inches tall. Uh, therefore, the first variance they're requesting to continue at that height is a is a 12 foot waiver, 12 foot, 8 foot la waiver. Uh, the maximum freestanding sign height under the signed ordinance in this sign area is 16 feet. Uh, the second waiver, uh, again, is related to uh, the configuration of the sign, freestanding signs are limited to some 42 square feet of area. Uh, the proposed sign is uh, significantly larger than that, some 151 square feet. Uh, therefore, the variance request of 109. Uh, the sign is uh, depicted uh, uh, in your packet that they're proposing to put up as well as the uh, existing. Any questions for Mr. Twing? Not seeing any, and I know the petitioner's present. I met him outside. You can come up, sir, and tell us about your plan. Mr. Hi, I'm Ryan Gazun. This is Heath Stack. He's the, uh, we're, we're both the owners of, uh, the owners of Supercar Wash. And this is Andrew Kalaki. He is uh, from the sign company. And he's going to tell you the specifics of our plan. Hello, good evening. Uh, Andrew Clacky, Metro Detroit Signs. Uh, address is 1117 Ferndale. Uh, I'm sorry, 1117 East Breckenridge, Ferndale. Um, <clears throat> so I just want to point out, number one, the message center that you see on here, the electronic message center, they're not proposing to do that right now. That was something that Kevin Duhanik in the building department suggested that we add in in case they wanted to do it in the future and didn't have to come back for another variance meeting. Um, so the only thing we're trying to do right now is just reface the existing box um, and really the hardship that these guys would have if we were to have to take the existing structure down and reduce the size of that to conform with uh, the ordinance they're going to be looking at a very very large cost to do that so all we're proposing is to really update the artwork we're not making any or changes to the structure beyond changing the artwork on the existing face and uh, that's the plan <clears throat> for the petitioner I just want to clear. Oh, sorry, I just want to clarify. So right now, you would reface the sign and the uh, the sign that's up there now that you switched the letters. That would remain. That would remain. Yes, the EMU is not something these guys are looking to do right now. They just wanted to present it to you at this meeting to see if you would approve it for a future change if they decided to do that in the future, so they didn't have to come back for another meeting. So yeah, really, the only thing we're proposing right now is just to change the artwork on the face. <clears throat> All right. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Paul, and just my comments. I'm looking at uh, the last page. I like the, um, the new artwork, but I do not like this electronic sign. So I'm glad you're not uh, going forward with it this time. Hopefully, you don't come back with it. 
my two cents. We, we, a lot of businesses in, in the community and throughout the area are, are moving towards this sign. It would allow us, it it's would allow us greater, yes. yeah, it would I, allow us greater use and we could use some for community messages and stuff like that to, throughout the community. But if, mm -hmm. if that's, if you'd rather see us not do that, then that's fine as well. Okay. Oh, you're a busy place, so um, I think I think just putting your sign up that's sufficient. So we get a lot of different signs that are uh, telling the community what's going on. So I mean, I appreciate your efforts, maybe down the line, but um, for me, it's going to take a long time. Okay. Mr. Chase. Yeah, and I don't know if they said it, but I know you're not coming for it, but is there a if not, then when kind of thing? Is there an anticipation of two years? We really haven't, we really haven't made a plan at all. Okay. Okay. It was a suggestion, like, like, like Andrew said, it was a suggestion by the, by the uh, building supervisor that, that we also go forward for this in case, in case sometime in the future we, we wanted to do that. But the main, the main thing is the refacing. Like we could take the... Okay. Right. Not seeing any other questions, I'm just going to ask you gentlemen to take a seat real quickly and see if there's anybody <coughs> in the audience who wants to address us on this matter. Is there anybody out there who would like to address the Planning Commission on this matter? Not seeing anybody, I will close the public hearing and bring it back to this side of the table. Ms. Barra? I have a question for Tim. Um, they're asking for a 12-foot height variance. They would be allowed to have that pole sign if it were if it was the at the variance right it's it's not the fact that it's there it's the fact that the height right if it was 16 feet to the top it would be fine and so they could cut it down to that and it would be you just okay. have to deal with the square footage in the, in the area okay otherwise any public comment Merrill's. um I don't have I don't have a problem with this. This the sign, especially with the way they're updating the, the sign itself is unique because it's not your standard square sign that we see everywhere. It, it's a sign that's got some character, and um, they're going to dress it up by putting new artwork on it. Uh, I don't have a problem with the height. I think if we were forced them to to bring the heights down, um, height down. It would be lost behind the building for any northbound traffic. It would be so low that you wouldn't be able to see it. So um, it, the sign has been there. This is an issue we faced before where you got an existing sign and all they're really doing is refacing it. Um, the electric message center, uh, if, if, if we were more focused on what it was, I, I think we could, we could you know, address it. But at this point, since you guys aren't even sure whether you want it or not, uh, I think it would probably be easier just to get this approved with the, uh, without the electric message center. With that being said, I'll make that motion. Motion by Mayor Ellison. Support. Support by Ms. Malawi. Any additional discussion? Um, I, have a question. Is it, I have a question. Is it without the electronic message sign? Without the electric electronic message sign. Yeah. Okay, that was my question, too. Yeah. I was going to ask for clarification on that also. Any other questions or discussion? All right, not seeing any, I will call for the vote. All those in favor of the motion as presented, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? You're all set. That does not prohibit you from coming back at a later time to request that message signed and supported. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, I made it and, and it was Sarah supported. supported. I think Sarah down there. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. That moves us on to our second sign variance, which is sign variance 150404, a sign variance request to install a wall sign for the hospital located, or hospital Beaumont Health System located at 3601 West 13 Mile Road. Mr. Twain. Oh. Uh, the petitioner is proposing uh, to have what are considered two wall signs on the, the side of the, the building. Uh, the sign ordinance in this area, uh, sign area one, simply allows one. Uh, so that is the uh, first variance there requested in, in the sense is to allow two wall signs on the, on the building facade. Uh, the second one is related that the max is 10% of the facade area up to 100 square feet. Uh, their sign total uh, exceeds that by some 144 square feet uh, when you add the two signs together. Uh, so those are the two variances they're requesting the uh, Planning Commission to consider. Any 
questions for Mr. Tuggan on this issue? Not seeing any. Is the petitioner present? Thank you, sir. Hello. Hi, my name is Jared Kopolaski. I'm a senior project manager with uh, Jones Lang LaSalle at Beaumont Health System. Uh, I've been at Beaumont for 14 years, and I'm pleased to be representing Beaumont here today in this uh, sign variance request. Um, Beaumont Hospital has been given a wonderful opportunity to further improve the quality of care we give our patients and better serve the community because of an extraordinarily generous gift. Um, the Asa and Sarah Shapiro family have generously offered their philanthropic backing to support the renovation of our second floor East Tower Surgical Care Intensive Surgical Intensive Care Unit. Excuse me. Uh, this is a 20-bed unit serving critical care patients who have just come from invasive cardiovascular surgical procedures. Uh, because of the generosity of the Shapiro family, we'll be able to better serve these critical patients in three major ways. Uh, number one, uh, instituting a new decentralized nursing model. Uh, this model will allow the staff to be at the bedside of the patients more and at the nurse stations less, uh, minimizing the amount of time the nurses and staff are not in view of the patients. Uh, number three, upgrading all the medical equipment serving these 20 patients on the floor. Uh, <clears throat> medical technology improvements from this new equipment will allow Beaumont staff to more closely monitor these patients, <laughs> reduce the time staff spends running tests, and will allow doctors to make even better decisions on the patient's treatment. Um, and the third one is architectural renovation of the unit to accommodate the new equipment, the decentralized nursing model, and improve the state patient, staff, and visitor flow. Um, the sign we are proposing and asking for a variance for uh, will be similar in size and style to the other previously approved exterior signs on the Beaumont Oilo campus, uh, recognizing gifts of similar size. Uh, most recently, the Tyner Center for Cardiovascular Intervention sign and the uh, Ministrelli Women's Heart Center sign. Uh, I humbly ask for your approval of this variance, uh, allowing Beaumont to properly recognize the Shapiro family's incredible generosity and allowing us to install an exterior sign on the north face of our east tower at the second floor level. The north wall of what will be the new Sarah and Asa Shapiro Heart and Vascular Intensive Care Unit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions for the petitioner? Mr. Casada. Um, just real quick, currently, the, the photo we have here, there's a hospital entrance sign and there's the uh, the donor name sign. It, right now, is there only the, the entrance sign? Correct. The hospital east entrance sign is the only one that's there right now. Okay, so there's, there's, there's neither a name nor a description, heart and vascular intensive care, that's not there now? That's correct. That would all be new as part of this request. Thank you. Yep. Yes, just, just clarification, this is the east elevation of the east tower or the north? This is actually the north elevation the north of the elevation. east tower. Yeah. Okay. It would be the 13 mile road facing okay. side. Not seeing any other questions, I'm going to ask you to take a seat real quickly. Thank you very much. I don't think there's going to be anybody who wants to chime in, but let's see. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to address the Planning Commission on this issue? Not seeing any, I will close the public hearing and bring it back to this side of the table for a discussion or a motion. Ms. Varro? I'd like to make a motion to move uh, with approval. This motion by Ms. Varro? Second. Supported by Ms. Casada. Any discussion on this motion? Sorry. Ms. Casada, then go to the mayor. All right, I just want to make the comment is that, um, uh, you know, this, there's a wayfinding sign here, and then there's an informational sign here. And I realize I don't, uh, Tim, I don't think there's any provision in the uh, in the ordinance that recognizes when this happens, I think it's not the first time it's happened when there's there's uh, somebody's asking for signs, but the signs are really uh, two different purposes. We, I'm we, correct, am I not? Building does generally you can't get into what's on the content. Mm -hmm. You can put up a sign, and the content of the sign mm -hmm. is we we can't regulate. So okay. Mayor Ellison. It's the same thing I said the last two times when we did this. Um, you know, our, our sign ordinance is there to prevent uh, sign um, uh, clutter and, 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 and um, to prevent the city from getting 
too much mess. And this is not the case here. Uh, we've got a situation where, you know, Beaumont, all the, the entire building is within their own property. All they're really going to be doing is putting the sign so that anybody on the, on the, the grounds itself will see that, you know, this building it was donated by this family, which I think is good because I think we're fortunate to have a hospital of Beaumont's uh, integrity and, and, and size in our community. And, and if we can keep encouraging uh, philanthropists to to give us money to make our hospital better than I'm all for it. and if it's as simple as letting them put a sign on the side of a building then I think it's a pretty easy decision I would say that in conjunction with the fact that you take a sign of this size against the building of that mass yeah and it really doesn't seem to bring it all to myself mm -hmm. not seeing any other discussion I will call for the vote all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye aye, aye. those opposed all set and that moves us on to our next sign variance, which is sign variance 150405, the sign variance request to install two roof signs and replace existing freestanding sign for a retail store, Royal Oak Bookstore, located at 28806 Woodward Avenue. Mr. Twang. Uh, what I've got up on the screen is the uh, roof sign, uh, the current uh, appearance of, of that sign looking from the south view uh, as well as the proposed uh, sign uh, proposed by the petitioner. Uh, the new sign would be 45 square feet. Uh, the sign ordinance uh, does not allow uh, roof signs. They're a prohibited type of sign and that's basically anything uh, that is mounted, attached, or projects over the uh, roof of the building as defined. Um, also in your packet and on the screen is the north view that's uh, being proposed again somewhere uh, to the south view. Uh, in addition, the petitioner is proposing to remove a freestanding sign uh, that is slightly um, larger, uh, I believe it's about 63 square feet, and re that entirely projects out over the public right-of-way. Uh, signs under the sign ordinance are not allowed to project or hang over the uh, public right-of-way. Uh, what they're replacing it with is a slightly smaller freestanding sign uh, with a message board that still uh, projects over the public right-of-way. Uh, so those are the two variants uh, requests that are listed in regards to the technically th three signs, uh, uh, two on a roof and, and uh, one freestanding sign. Any questions for Mr. Twain? Ms. Ryan. You said two on the roof. I'm confused by that. Is it both sides of the Sorry. existing brick? Yes. Okay. So they want to keep the brick and they want to add a new sign to it. Both sides. Both sides. Okay. Thank you. Actually, I did have one question in regard to that. Let's say for argument's sake that that projecting rooftop area was actually a cutout and they were project, pre presenting or asking for one sign that fit into that cutout, which you could see from both the north and the south. Would that still be two signs, or would that now fall into the category of being one sign? I think it'd be two, it's probably two signs, because it's not two different elevations. Well, I think the reason they're treating it as two signs on a roof is that it's not connected in any fashion now, versus if you just had a two. Normally, when you have a sign, you've got two faces to it. In this case, it's, I think, that treatment it is being treated is it's placed on two different walls. Ms. Farrell. Um, the example they're showing looks like uh, some sort of a illuminated messaging board. Is, is that, is this just an example or are they planning on having a, a messaging board? I think I'll let the petitioner explain their, okay, their thank proposed you. sign. Not seeing any other hands, I will call for the, uh, is the petitioner present? Please come up, introduce yourselves, tell us about your signs. Hi, uh, Joe DeDuca, I'm a lawyer. I'm here on behalf of the applicants. A small presentation here for you tonight. Michael Zacks, I'm from Secure Solutions, the sign contractor proposing the signs on the property. What you uh, currently have there is uh, a unique property in the sense that it's pie-shaped. As you can see from that, um, from that rendering, and it makes it virtually impossible 
to have any other type of signage. What you've got here is this is the Retrofitting, and that's basically what we're talking about here. And um, what actually needs to be recognized is we're reducing the signage by 50%. So basically, increasing the efficiency of the signage with the way that this particular design and that uh, Mr. Zacks here has uh, designed for it. Um, with respect to the um, wall, the wall sign was actually intended to be a single sign because it's going to be inlaid in that in that brick wall. And so it's one sign, as you can see, and it is also replacing existing signage and reducing what is currently today an 18 by 14 foot sign by a 5 by 10 sign. So again, increasing uh, the efficiency and location and the aesthetic appearance of the signage. Um, if you go back to the history, these, these buildings in the um, business district there dates back to the mid-1900s. And um, as you can see, a lot of the businesses share walls there. And because uh, Woodward Avenue is a, uh, the All-American Road that uh, has a speed limit of about 45 miles per hour, having signage like this helps motorists be uh, safer because they see it in advance of stopping and putting on their turn signal. So that's uh, one of the reasons why they've developed over the years. Um, what we did was we took some samplings of uh, other businesses in the area that have been before the commission over the years and uh, even currently. Before I get to that, since I just located the other you know, the rendering, Mr. Zach's prepared these renderings for you so you can see exactly what we're talking about here. The uh, encroachment on the sidewalk is actually an air encroachment. The structure itself is an existing structure and it's, and it's on the premises of the, the property, the, the owner's uh, premises. And what you have here is, this is the structure here. You can see it's pretty massive and we're intending on scaling it back to either this or this. Okay, but in any event, it would be simply an air uh, encroachment, and it would pr it would not uh, um, give any any uh, public uh, hazard or any problems with respect to public safety. Um, we went through and took a, a survey, basically, of uh, businesses within two miles, going up and down Woodward Avenue, and you, as you can see, there are. Uh, signs as proposed on walls uh, at the Village Automotive there. They have multiple signs. They have, I counted five, <laughs> and uh, it clearly exceeds the square footage that is being proposed here, which is within the uh, ordinances. Um, you have uh, McDonald's, which is approximately a mile, which is south 13 Mile Road. Their signage far exceeds the height of the building. Um, and they do have the EMC uh, signage, as you can see here. Um, and then another rendering, uh, another sign that they have on the same building. Actually, if you count the logo, it's three. Uh, it exceeds the height of the building as well. Um, if you look at uh, Pier 1 Imports, which is a, also a business in the last 10 years or so, you can see that they're uh, their T sign far exceeds the height of the building. Uh, the other sign that they have uh, somewhat exceeds the height of uh, the roof um, on the parapet. Um, you've got uh, here by Red Coat Tavern, you've got the auto service sign. They actually have two signs in a single pole that exceeds the height of both the chimney and the building. You can see off to the distance, you've got the Shell gas station sign. They also use the EMC boards. Um, here's a close-up with respect to that signage. More recent sign, 
within the last uh, year and a half that was approved um, exceeds the height of the building. Also, a little bit of encroachment, air encroachment on the sidewalk. Um, let's see. This is also a recent sign with the last three years, physical therapy facility. That encroaches the public sidewalk. It's an air encroachment. It exceeds the height of the building by uh, several feet. Also, multiple signs, as you can see. Um, once again, Village Automotive, here's another sign that uh, is also a, uh, a flag sign. There is some encro encroachment on the public sidewalk. It somewhat exceeds the height of uh, the building as well. Here's the Sagemore um, Motor Lodge. Um, they're clearly substantially encroaching the air rights on the um, public sidewalk. Here's a more recent sign that was put up in the last uh, eight years, which is Enterprise rent car They are above the building, a pole sign that encroaches uh, on the uh, public sidewalk as well. There's multiple signs, also on, uh, these are on roofs, or at least um, they're hung on the roofs, and um, they encroach on public sidewalk. Sorry about that. It's the golf shop. Yeah. Um, here's another photograph which also indicates multiple businesses going all the way down Woodward uh, in a southerly direction. Keep in mind that's Berkeley. That's Sorry. Berkeley. Sorry? That's the city of Berkeley. <laughs> yes, part of that is Berkeley. All of that is Berkeley. That's all Berkeley. <laughs> um, you've got... Here is a restaurant Billy Sims put up in the last three years. Um, Itel Moda, which is a structure completely on the roof. Um, and obviously the signage there that you see is on the public right away, the signage here. Because, like I say, back in the 1950s, that's just the way they were, they were structured and that's the way the, uh, the business district was formed. Um, but no different for this particular property because it is of that vintage and wasn't created by the uh, applicant. Um, here are other structures, refined resale, tailoring alterations. Um, I, mean, I, I think you've shown us plenty of examples yeah. of signs that are non-conforming. I think it's important for you to understand also that a lot of those signs predate our sign ordinance. And as we are addressing the Woodward Corridor, we're trying to clean up signage and do what we can, which isn't to say we're not going to give you a, you know, a, a fair hearing, but some of those signs predate our ordinance, so they're not all necessarily applicable to what we're discussing here this evening. So, Right. Um, here's a more recent sign also on a, on a, on a wall sign that... Kind of None of those are really all that recent. <laughs> you're talking about Golden Basket or you're talking about uh, Joe's Army Navy. They've been there for, I'm not going to say the mid 1900s, but at least the later end of the 1900s. Joe's Army Navy is older than I am. Yeah. Here's a. Um, Kalamata which was approved, that's on a parapet wall. And that was approved in the last 18 months. Um, here is a new sign, also on a wall, which is the Harvest Garden. And while the building was there before, the uh, sign itself is uh, fairly recent. But I think you get the the idea of what I've got these photographs. I, we turned these in uh, a couple of days ago. They should be a part of the file. Um, if you have any questions, we can answer those. Any questions for the petitioner at this point? Not at this point. Right. Just add, add one thing as far as comment. That sign uh, that's mounted on the wall would be one sign that's double-faced, actually. So the brick is actually hogged out, so it's one double-faced sign. It's yeah, not the, the two brick sides. is hollowed out totally. That was the question. Right. Yeah, that's the question that I was trying to get at. It's just one sign. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Ms. Brown. Um, would this be an electronic message sign? Yes, it would. Both of them? 
Correct. Okay. All right, not seeing any other questions, I'm just going to ask you gentlemen to take a seat real quickly in case anybody in the audience wants to address us on this issue. I see one hand. Yes, ma'am. If I could have you introduce yourself for the record. Sure. My name is Lisa Gleason. I own the buildings adjacent to this building, 28822 and 28834. Before I start, I just want to make sure that I recognize Gary Casada. He and my husband have done uh, architectural litigation together over the years, so I wanted to disclose that before I started with my comments. <laughs> <laughs> Gary will tell you a story. Um, there are three things in the ordinance that uh, I'm going to appeal to your census on. Uh, one is visual clutter. The next is pedestrian and traffic safety. And the third one is adverse effect on nearby public and private property. If we look at the animated sign, um, our question is, uh, what's the need for it? Uh, that's 900 square feet. My building that currently houses drought is 800 square feet, and the building that my business is in is 1,187. We had a non-conforming sign that hung over the sidewalk in 2003 when we bought the building. We uh, removed it because it was not well maintained and because it was out of conformance with uh, the ordinance provisions. The sign that they're proposing to replace the existing Royal Oak freestanding sign is on a corner that uh, abuts a residential area and so uh, it seems to me that not only is it uh, an advertising if it is going to be approved as an animated sign um, but it's also just because it's smaller it still hangs over the sidewalk it's still a pedestrian uh, problem we have a lot of people driving on Woodward uh, when I went into my building in 2003, we did a time and motion study on Woodward. Uh, going northbound, um, most of the people are not obeying the traffic uh, regulation because they want to hit 12 mile. And our study was done by Joe Ronsky of Joe Ronsky and Associates in Royal Oak. They showed that the traffic at that stage was going about 60 miles an hour. Um, going southbound, most people don't even see that sign because there's a median and there's also four lanes of traffic going southbound. So in order to be able to get uh, clients and prospective clients into our little strip mall, we have, uh, as a group of all the other businesses, um, done other creative things to address the method and the limitations in terms of square footage of signage. So in my case, my building has awnings. They're very colorful, uh, but going 60 miles an hour, you will not see a street number. So there are other methods they could be using instead of the signage. Uh, as, in terms of visual clutter, we as an organization uh, in Royal Oak have been working our hardest to clean up uh, Woodward Avenue. Woodward Avenue Association as an economic development organization has also been working to eliminate that visual clutter. This is just reinstating something that has uh, really kind of an overdone three signs for a 900 square foot building. This is not a CVS, this is not a gas station, this is not a national headquarters, this is not an automobile dealership. There really is not a necessity for that. Me personally, because I own the buildings adjacent, um, Mr. DeLuca misstated something. These are not common wall buildings, they're all separate walled buildings. They were all built somewhere between 1949 and 1953. His building was built in 1953. So one of the questions we have about installing that animated sign in the parapet wall is, what's the engineering like on that wall? 
Does it meet today's code in terms of wind, storm, and adverse weather? I doubt it. It's a combination of brick and block. So uh, are there re-rod? Is there some uh, steel in there? I doubt it. All of the buildings that are in this particular strip are all load-bearing <coughs> wall buildings with a flat roof. And this is the only building that has that parapet wall. <clears throat> so 62 years ago when that was built, there probably wasn't any consideration of putting something that would have weight to it on that wall. The intention was it was painted and it was a sign on a wall. Now they're talking about putting a sign that has weight. How is it going to be braced? What's the engineering behind it? And I have a building right next door. So if the wind were to blow it, and we had 80 mile an hour winds here recently, it'll either fall onto my roof or it'll fall onto their roof, depending on which way the wind is blowing. I don't want the insurance responsibility of beefing up my building to anticipate maybe what might happen in 100 years, but still it is uh, potentially a huge liability for me. Uh, and the last thing I would say is, I think that that gives them an unfair advantage of having three signs that are not conforming to the ordinance that limits the amount of signage based on the frontage that you have on Woodward Avenue. And if the signs are supposed to be parallel to the street, which is also in the ordinance, these are not. They do not conform in any way. They're perpendicular to the street. So three signs for a 900 square foot. What tenant is going in there that needs three signs? And if you allow an animated sign, what's to control them from future tenants asking for scrolling messages, which this size building is kind of absurd. So. I would ask that you seriously consider denying these variances and that uh, we look at the flavor and the architecture that's in this particular little strip of businesses and understand that uh, we can't jump to 2015 with animated signs. Thanks. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Not seeing anybody, I will close the public hearing and bring it back to this side of the table. Mr. Chase, then Mr. Casada. May I clarify something? In a moment, sir. I have uh, one question, but three, it's in three parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this um, is back to school. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, that's a wing wall. Was there a building up before that? Uh, so that was, it, that's that just built as a sign. So if they were to change the wording from used books to anything else, would that still fall under the same kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's still a rooftop Requirements, yeah. so it's still a rooftop sign, so they'd still have to come in and get the, hey, I want to change the lettering, still there, right? Okay, all right. Actually, it was only in two parts, sorry. <laughs> Is that? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, I have a couple things. First of all, um, I just want to point out, currently I'm opposing Mr. Gleason in litigation, so there's no conflict. Okay. <laughs> um, second of all, I, I do want to comment about Lisa's gift wraps real quick. Now, I, I'm, I'm familiar with this store, and I, probably there is a, a variance was probably needed at the time, but that store is one of the more uh, creative and, and good-looking uh, store frontage on the strip there. And so I, um, I have a lot of sympathy for what I'm hearing because really the, the, when we get a signed variance request, one of the things we obviously want is to promote the purposes of the zoning ordinance. One is, is aesthetic enhancement. Uh, now we saw a bunch of uh, presentation of the signs that were already there that didn't look very good. And in my humble opinion, what's being proposed is not, an, uh, uh, is not an aesthetic enhancement in the way sure. uh, some of the other signs are. So um, that 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 makes me lean very heavily not to not to support this. I, I do want to say that uh, the comment about the uh, cutout right now that that uh, large parapet wall is not cut out. That means it has to be cut out 
if you're going to put the single sign in it, and that would mean if you're going to do the work to cut it out, maybe you can do the work to cut it off. Just a thought. Um, but I don't think it's an aesthetic enhancement. I'm not inclined to support it. If, uh, if somebody came up with a creative idea to use that parapet that was aesthetically pleasing, that would be one thing. And I certainly don't think, when, I, I certainly don't think it's impossible or even detrimental to put a sign on the Woodward side of the building. Everybody else is doing it there, and some are doing it very well. So that's my position. Ms. Brown. Um, a couple of um, comments. Um, number one, uh, I, I've lived, I live in this area, so I've, I've been driving by here for years, and I think this is sort of an iconic location. Um, the freestanding sign that's hanging over the sidewalk has been there a long time. Um, I don't know that that bothers me as much at this point. And also the used books on the brick doesn't bother me as much because maybe I'm just used to it. Um, I, I'm opposed to these electronic messaging in this area. There are people that live there. Um, there are children that play in the school back there. I think it's distracting. Um, I agree with some of the comments about the uh, potential compromising of the structure. I'm not a structural person, so I, you know, I can't comment beyond it being a concern. But I, I am opposed to the style of sign being proposed and the amount of space that is taken up. If there was another creative solution to use the existing um, area in some fashion, I might be more inclined to um, or receptive to hearing that. But this particular um, proposal, I'm, I'm not inclined to, um, to uh, approve. Ms. Mahali. Um, I, I also want to um, agree with my um, uh, co-planning commissioners. Um, you know, I do realize the shape of the lot um, and the placement of the building on that lot, um, you know, does kind of present a little bit of a hardship in terms of locating um, a sign um, and for the visibility. But uh, um, I cannot be in support of, um, in essence, um, you know, four electronic signs, two double-sided signs. Um, I, I absolutely feel like it would be out of, out of character with the surrounding um, commercial area and you know the, the close proximity to the residential homes on Linwood um, and the school um, and you know as Miss Gleason uh, pointed out and you know I, I agree you know she's they've done a very nice job in attracting um, you know attention to the business in a nice tasteful aesthetic way that's it's you know in character with the area and there are other ways to, to bring um, focus to the business without without going this um, severe route. So I won't be able to support it either. I've got Mr. Poulton and then Mayor Allison next. Thank you. Um, this um, proposal was denied because by the building official because the roof signs were not allowed and uh, this freestanding sign is not allowed. So I'm not sure what I mean, when I looked at this, it looked to me just like a mess. Um, I think if you were, the money would have been better spent improving the facade. I think you'd get more people in there. If you look, there's one um, slide I was looking at, it's draft. I mean, if you need to modernize the building, it might uh, increase the traffic. There was some samples given of different signs as this is what needed, is needed for uh, to drive the traffic to the business. And I think a couple of those that have presented are closed businesses, including, I, I mean, I would just, when you pointed to an example of the Sagmore Motor Lodge, I mean, that's ready for demolition. That's, the sign's gonna go with it. I think the signs need to go with this. I mean, when I look at this, I see, well, I, don't, I don't know what's gonna be operated here that you need three signs, these electronic message boards. I, I mean, I just don't get it. Um, I'm, I move that we deny this request. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Poulton, support by Ms. Mullally. Mayor Allison, do you want Let to Let me get my comments in. Um, first of all, the freestanding sign for me is, is would never fly anyways. Uh, I know you. The, the point was made that it's it's freestanding over the public right away, but not so much. Well, that's part of the problem because you deal with water uh, and ice dripping off of it. You've got birds that sit up there and make a mess coming out. That's why we're trying to get these things off the uh, off the right away over the sidewalks. Um, so I, there, there's no way I would approve any kind of. Uh, of the pole sign there. I'd like to see that sign taken down. As far as the sign on the wall, I mean, the wall is there. 
Uh, right now, it has a sign on it. We can we can deny the use of that wall for a sign. I don't think we can tell them to take the wall down as part of the structure. But where I want to go here is I, I think you're really selling this building short on its capabilities. I think you've got a very unique building with a very unique shape that if you were to really take a good look at it and, and get creative how you can identify whatever business is going to go in there, you're going to do yourself a big favor but make the building more attractive rather than taking the easy way out and slapping electronic signs on flat spaces. Because that's, that's what you're trying to do. I would wish you'd go back and look at your building. You really do have a unique building. Uh, even though it was built in the mid-1900s, I was built in the mid-1900s. So, <laughs> you know, I'm about the same age as these buildings and I, you know, I, I think I hold up pretty good. <laughs> so, um, I, I, really, I really would suggest that you go back and look at what you've got there, which is really kind of an architectural gem, really. Anytime you've got a unique building that, that, that's, that's got geometric shapes that aren't, that aren't square, I'm, I'm talking right now. So, um, uh, you know, it's just, I'm going to support the motion to deny, and I would suggest you go back and, and come back with some, you know, if you come back with some creative ideas, it, it, I have no doubts that anything you come back with is going to probably require some kind of variance anyways. But th this group is going to be more receptive to a variance um, that that has had some thought put into it, rather than just slap an electronic sign up there. Okay, I'm done now. Any other comments? And All right, sir, if you wanted to address this before I call for the vote, please I, do. I appreciate that. Could you uh, uh, stand stand the microphone, please? Well, I wanted to show you that actually the building department approved improvements to the bookstore, and this first four feet is actually on it. The, the other uh, portion of the building is uh, very hard to drive it, and uh, the windows were all replaced uh, about six, because by the way, this stayed uh, in a dilapidated state for about uh, two years or so. Um, and most recent six months, people started throwing rocks and things of that nature through the windows and really made it horrible. Uh, there's a quarter million dollars being spent on renovation. Um, that uh, the building department has approved. Um, the, the gentleman we worked with in terms of the signage indicated to provide you with these two concepts with existing signage and, um, and his recommendation was that the commission would accept one or the other. Um, in terms of it being a uh, animated sign, it isn't an animated sign. Um, it, this sign otherwise conforms with the ordinance. The only two issues that the, the um, city officials sent us here for was with regard to the one or the other. As you can see, um, either the roof sign or the or freestanding sign or both. So we wanted to give you that flexibility and um, in hopes of you know, getting this uh, business back to being a bookstore and uh, improving um, the value of the property surrounding it because, as I say, there's a quarter million dollars being spent on renovations to this property that I neglected to tell you because I thought you already knew. And I apologize for that. Did I see your hand there, Elsa? No. All right. At least I saw your hand, but we've already had public comments, so. Okay. Is there any other discussion on this motion? I'll just make the comment that Sada, go ahead, sir. If, if the uh, I haven't we haven't we this body hasn't seen the finished design for the building. Uh, I don't know who your architect is, but if they're a good architect and you like the design, you might consult with them to see if they can integrate a signage uh, with the building that that is a little more pleasing. That would be my thought. Well, we did consult engineers. And that's a part, should be a part of I don't know if they gave it to you, but the engineer, <coughs> where there were concern, concerns about any structural issues, the engineers um, provided with the, a stamp certification that structurally everything would be sound and there would be no uh, uh, safety issues whatsoever. Well, engineers are not, not to say all of them, are not generally known for their aesthetic sense. Well, the city's engineers agreed with it, so. Uh, otherwise, we'd be here with that issue as well. Yeah, okay. Thank you. We just, you know, we, we hope that um, that um, you don't apply the ordinance or the variances in a selective basis. That you know, there's 
equal protection and uh, you know, uh, the First Amendment is uh, allowed to prevail in these instances, under these circumstances. <coughs> yeah, uh, Tim, are, should, I mean, in these cases, do we do a findings of fact or we just make a motion? Uh, no, the, the, motion? Petitioners, the, the petitioner has the ability to put signs on this building that do comply. Um, they're asking for a variance to not comply with ordinance requirements. You're not denying them any rights of, of putting signs on this building. They're asking to go outside those with a roof sign and a sign that hang over the public right of way. So no, you don't need a finding of fact. The burden is on them to prove that there's a, a reason for a variance. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. All right, then, if there's no other discussion, I will call for a uh, vote on the motion. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you, gentlemen. Then that moves us on to do you want to take a second to... Yeah, if you could like pull it to the side, then I can move on to the next item. Thanks, sir. Then was this a sign variance 150406, a sign variance request to install two wall signs for a multiple family development, the South Main Lofts located at 855 South Main Street. Mr. Twain. Uh, the signs that are being presented um, this evening are... Uh, have been considered as real estate signs or real estate advertisement signs uh, in the review of the sign ordinance by the building department. Uh, so it's the way we've listed it is, uh, and, and under the real estate sign requirement, uh, it doesn't allow a sign each facade. It says the real estate sign has to be on frontage. Uh, so you'll see that uh, uh, placement of signs on the south and north walls uh, don't have frontage, uh, so that's part of the reason the variances are listed uh, the way are the way they are with allowing two wall signs and to allow those walls, wall signs on facades without major street frontage. Uh, otherwise, you could put a wall sign on each facade. Um, again, because they were treated as real estate signs, the maximum size that's allowed uh, is 20 square feet uh, for each wall sign. Um, Therefore, they're, they're 320 in totality, and they're asking for a variance of 300 square feet. Uh, lastly, the last variance relates to that they're uh, indicated as being vinyl, uh, and therefore considered banners, uh, and the ordinance doesn't allow banner signs. Any questions for Mr. Twain, Mr. Casada? Uh, you said the ordinance doesn't allow banner signs, but the report says except under certain circumstances. What are the certain? They wouldn't special apply. events. To the temporary, right. very temporary, like weeks, not. Right. Okay. Are there not as real estate signs? So they're also temporary, but they might be there for months and months. Right. No. But they're still not. Did I see her, Ms. Farrell? Yes. Um, Tim, have we allowed, um, with all the development we've had over the past 10, 15, 20 years, have we allowed anything like this in, in the past? I'm trying to think. Metro Lofts. The me Metro Lofts, uh, the fifth, had these signs. And mm -hmm. you know, we, we had put a, a, a time duration on it. You can have these signs for six months. And then they would have okay. to come back to us and ask again if they can renew that. This type, that. like a bit yeah. type sign? Yeah. sign? Yeah. Okay. As I know, the, the fifth had theirs right on the front of the building, so you could see it down Fifth Street. And uh, I know Metro Loss, we let them go with a, with a big one because they were set back from Main Street. And then they sent it so they could do this. It really wasn't on the front of the building. It was on this, that narrow. I believe of, Station 3 had one as well. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking of, yeah. Station 3, so yeah. I yeah, remember um, LA Fitness had uh, a, temp a temporary storefront on Washington, but I don't remember them having a big sign when they were trying to advertise. When they're doing it. Right, yeah. we've, okay. we've done this, we've done this for residential developments where people are, where, where developers are trying to either rent or sell the units, okay. not for a business starting up. Thank you. And did I have you next, Mayor? No, I, that's all I wanted to get is that, that we had done this before. Ms. Mullally. Can I just ask, were these, were the uh, prior approved, were they also vinyl as well? It was pretty much similar. And can I also ask, might be a stupid question, but has there ever been a instance or any sort of complaints with them falling off or coming off at all? Any prior complaints or 
due to weather like or something. That. Well, if they're happening, yeah, like, they're either required to put it back yeah. up or remove okay. it. But not any like I major catastrophes with them flying off and batteries being out of place. Okay. Okay. Thank you. This one. Uh, one more question, Tim. So if something of this size were to go up, is it inspected by your building department to make sure it's secure? Or the engineering department? Or um, well, they're going to simply issue a, uh, the sign permit for it. They're not necessarily going to go out and see how it was mounted. Okay. If it starts to blow down, they're going to tell them to take it down or reattach it. I'm just thinking about a safety yeah, I mean, it's issue. Temporary. Okay. Thank you. Not seeing any of the hands. Is the petitioner present? Introduce yourself for the record, if you would, sir, and tell us about your signs. I'm Michael Stevens. I'm with Signorama and Troy. I'm representing um, Frank from uh, Aragona Properties, who's the uh, developer. Uh, we are proposing two temporary uh, leasing banners um, at a size of 320 square feet uh, per wall frontage. Um, the reason that we're not doing it on Main um, and trying to get frontage on the north and southbound is. Um, number one for exposure in addition to actually the front of the building um, which is, isn't indicated there but I think in your packet um, there's windows and doors for the um, apartment leasing spaces so there's nowhere actually on a, f a flat wall facade area where you'd be able to install any size banner whether it's 50 square feet 150 square feet um, there's just not a good surface to back to security point where you'd be able to put a banner um, regardless of size. And again, they're really trying to get their main exposure from traffic coming out of downtown towards 696 and then off of 696 into downtown. Um, so that's additional reasons why we propose doing on both the sides. Um, Aragona Properties is um, willing to um, conform with uh, additional sizing options. This is kind of the initial size that we went with. The architect had set this drawing up. Um, and based on my calculation, um, it's 5% of what each square foot frontage um, side of the building is. So each side of the building is 6,400 square feet of frontage. Um, and if you do the math, it comes out to 5%. So I don't know if that's exactly how they came up with that, but that's being a sign guy, that's what I came up with. Um, well, let so, me ask you a question real quickly, yeah. if I could. I mean, in a perfect world, when would you anticipate putting them up, and how long are you looking to have them stay up? Uh, ideally, they would like to have them up through the end of the year, um, as close into the end of fall as possible, um, and as early as mid, probably May, uh, for fabrication to get an install team out there, too. So it wouldn't be anything in, um, for the next 30 days, I would, I would say. <coughs> Anything else you want to add or? No. Nope. Any questions for the petitioner at this point? Mayor okay. Olson. <clears throat> so you're saying you need how many how many days to fabricate, 30 days to fabricate? Uh, uh, within 30 days we'd be ready for okay, install, so yes. If we were so to say, say something say. to allow you to put it up starting June 1st to take it down by December 31st, that would fit, that's a six month time frame. Uh, yeah, I think he's trying to get them up as early as possible yeah, to get okay. the leasing of the spaces okay. done. I, I would rather him not lease, you know, half the spaces, and then he's paying the expense of the banner. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to, you know, to this being the middle of that April, ideally, I guess the yeah. middle of May. I mean, yeah. I don't care how we adjust it. I'm just asking if that six month, it's easier for us to put in a six month time frame yeah, like that. Yeah, sure, definitely. Mr. Casada, how, how do you affix them to the building? Um, this is correct. Yeah, we, we would use masonry uh, anchors for that. Um, at a size like this, you're probably going to be going every foot across the top and every foot uh, around the perimeter as far as, as the anchor holes. So you'd have uh, 16, 20, about 70 to 80 anchors holding the sign or the banner in place. I guess I should call it a banner because it is a banner. Um, and that also can be out of various materials. It doesn't have to be a vinyl material. It could be a cloth material. Um, it could be a mesh material, which is a perforated, allows uh, the wind to shine through. So there are different options for that. And uh, I was wondering if you're going to have any flaps in it or whether it would be a, a, a permeable material. Because like, I'm concerned, even with 80 anchors, you get a good wind down that wall. Oh, sure. It's going to yeah. get behind it. Yeah. On one side more than the other, yeah. certainly. <clears throat> Let's go stop. Another question. Uh, did you consider placing the sign? It is a big sign, but did you consider making it smaller and placing it within the frame of one of those uh, uh, beige brick areas? In other words, frame set it in there like a frame instead of 
having it overlap. So where the light light, uh, the light discoloration to dark yeah. discoloration. Yes, that... it's, you, you sort of got it uh, beca probably because it's so big. It's it's overlapping, uh, but you do have a design on the side of the building. There you've got those mm -hmm. four squares, and mm -hmm. if you put it right in the center one, that might that might be more attractive. Yeah, it could certainly. I, I don't know if that wall's actually been finished. These pictures were taken. That wall looks uh, like little, that today, so. What's that? That wall looks like that today. Oh, does it? Okay, yeah, I haven't been there in the last 30 days, so, um, when I started working on this, so. Um, it could certainly fit within that size. You could certainly frame it out. I mean, there's there's multiple ways of, of securing the banner for additional support, too, so. But that, uh, that from would a be, size that would perspective. That be my thought. From a size perspective, you, yeah, you, it'd be, it would it'd be maybe about 40 to 50 square feet smaller if it were to go within that light beige area. Okay, so, so under 11 percent smaller or something. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions? Not seeing any. Let me see if there's anyone in the audience who wants to address us on this matter. Thank you, Ms. Gleason or Mr. Amber. Anybody? I will close the public hearing and bring it back to this side of the, of the table for a discussion or a motion. Mayor Olson. I'll give it a shot. Um, uh, Mr. Kassad, I appreciate what you're trying to do, uh, but fit it within that. I'm trying to help myself, and I'm looking at it with the with the size of the different color blocks they've got. It makes it considerably smaller. If I'm looking at the proper scaling here, it's going to make it half of what they're what they're showing us. And and I guess if it's only going to be a temporary sign, anyways, I'm I'm not terribly troubled by the by them going with what they've got. So uh, I'm going to make a motion that we allow the variances to hang the two uh, uh, signs, the vinyl signs or permeable cloth, whatever it is, uh, on, on the north and south elevation of the building for a period not to exceed six months from installation. I have a motion by Mayor Ellison. Support. Support by Ms. Mullally. Any discussion on the motion? Mr. Casada. Well, what has been the practice that people come back at the end of the time period and ask for an extension? They, they can, and we have done it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the way I look at it is, is we've got a developer that, that is investing a tremendous amount of money into our downtown for residential units. And if we can work within our abilities to help them sell those units, then I think we owe them that, that <coughs> support. I certainly agree with that. And there was a previous development, I think it was the Metro Lofts, where they, we gave them a six-month window, and that window also happened to coincide with the real estate crash, yeah. and they were just having a heck of a time selling their units, and they came back and asked for an additional three yeah. or six months or what have yeah. you. Hopefully then another crash is not coming, so we won't have to deal with that. Not seeing any other discussion, I will call for a vote. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? You're all set. Thank you. And who supported? Sarah. Somebody supported. Oh, Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> and that brings us to a review of a conceptual site plan to construct 36 multiple family dwelling units, the Amber on 11, located at 1207 East 11 Mile Road. Mr. Twain. Uh, this is not an item that uh, we're looking for any action tonight on. Uh, it's an item that we have uh, had discussions uh, with Mr. Amber on. Uh, he would like your input and uh, comment prior to going to actual site plans and uh, our architectural documents for this site. I would point out that this is a site owned by the city through the block grant program on 11 Mile Road that uh, Mr. Amber is uh, made an offer to acquire. Uh, you do have a copy of staff's preliminary overview of the concept plan. Um, and what we've pointed out in there that is that the property is currently zoned neighborhood business. Uh, neighborhood business does not allow residential in and of itself. Uh, it's only allowed uh, as a second floor uh, activity, second floor and above, uh, other permitted uses, uh, not including parking. Uh, so the site would need to be uh, rezoned through a rezoning process. Uh, the, the actual district hasn't been identified as part of uh, um, any submission or application at this point, uh, but there are options there uh, to consider. Uh, we've also pointed out that the density of the site, the size of the site, which is uh, approximately 22,500 square feet under the 
uh, ordinance standards of 9,000 square feet for the first two units and 3,000 square feet after that, you come up with approximately seven dwelling units would be allowed under multifamily. Um, in order to get 36 units in compliance with the ordinance, you'd need uh, over uh, 100 and 111,000 square feet uh, to get that number of units. So there is a discussion of density in it and uh, that you'll need to get into. Uh, uh, next is the off-street parking requirement. Uh, the zoning ordinance is set up to require uh, two, two parking spots per unit. Uh, simple math at 36 is uh, 72 unit or 72 spaces. Um, Mr. Amherst proposing one space per unit, uh, per studio unit, uh, with four extras, based on the concept plan that you have in front of you. Uh, and then we've also pointed out uh, the setback. Uh, technically starts out at 25 uh, feet from each property line. The Planning Commission does have the discretion to uh, reduce that uh, to what it feels is appropriate as part of your a site plan review process. Um, and then finally, the building height strictly under the ordinance is limited to 30 feet to uh, either the midpoint of a peak building or the roof of a flat building. Uh, the concept is over that uh, roughly uh, almost 36 uh, feet. So those are some of the issues with the plan that we're gonna point out and I know Mr. Amber wants to uh, discuss with you before he goes further with uh, plans. What I also added after you go through this item that we've spent some time on, uh, he's got a proposal that uh, is up on uh, uh, Normandy and Crooks uh, that we can talk about tonight as well if you'd like. So with that, I'll stop. Any questions for Mr. Twing at this point? Not seeing any. Mr. Amber. Going solo tonight, Jerry. Where's, where, yeah, I'm gonna say, where's your mouthpiece? I'll <laughs> <laughs> we'll go better without them. <laughs> we'll manage. And I have a uh, yeah. yeah. you know, and we have some drives to pass out, some elevations that you'll see. Uh, that is the uh, site plan. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <laughs> I'm uh, Jerry Amber from Amber Properties, and as you know, we've been around for a few years. Um, we are a family business that uh, began around 1960, the Coolidge uh, location on uh, just south of 14 Mile. Justin's setting up the boards while I'll, I'll begin talking. Hopefully, Dennis will arrive. Um, I let. There's an easel right there. If you want. Um, I last spoke to the commission on the 2nd of March when uh, we got approval to, to, uh, for the city to sell the property and it's now under contract. We do have 1,279 units under uh, our operation currently and 46 under construction in Troy. Um, in Royal Oak, we, we operate 675 units at 14 uh, campus locations. As you know, we've done some recent developments in, in town. Uh, the last five, uh, Amber Landing, Crooks and Normandy, just uh, in early 2014, we completed. Uh, Amber Corners, behind Gordon Foods, uh, Crooks and 14 Mile, uh, 2013, early in the year, we got that one done. Uh, downtown Royal Oak, uh, Amber Crossing, North Sherman, uh, early 2011. Um, town Hall, <coughs> Mile, near Woodward. Um, on the uh, south side, Birmingham being across the street, we did that in 2008. And the Amber Oak Townhomes, which was really our, our first big project in Royal Oak, um, in my generation anyway, uh, late 2006 we finished. With each new project, uh, we're trying to respond to the market. Um, we listen to what our prospective renters tell us, and uh, they say they like the new construction. They sneer at some of the buildings that we have from the 60s and the 70s that they don't measure up. So we want to provide for them, you know, with all the amenities that the new construction uh, offers. That's why we're, we're so uh, pleased with the site on 11 Mile, because we think this is, is really an opportunity to do something great. Um, it's a perfect location, we think, for studio apartments. So the concept of this project is studio apartments. And we think that um, because our tenants want them and we don't have them, we literally have no studio apartments available in our company at this time. We haven't for over a month. And we think that that speaks volumes to what the market is telling us. We, we have studio apartments, we have many of them, we just don't have enough. 
So the project on 11 Mile, we were going to call Amron 11. It's uh, 10, 10 blocks approximately from Main Street. Um, we think this would encourage walkability and bicycling. bicycling. Excuse me. He's doing fine without you. <laughs> <laughs> My best, Dennis. Uh, don't make fun. Um, we uh, think we're going to provide easy access to the Royal Oak destinations that the tenants uh, are, are, are looking to, to uh, take advantage of. Uh, it'll be encouraging less reliance on the automobile, an excellent example of sustainable design. Uh, we think it'll help revitalize 11 Mile Road, you know, that end of, the, uh, of 11 Mile, um, this would improve that. And it responds to real world market conditions, which we're telling you is, is impressive to us. So the next steps are we'd like encouragement from the Planning Commission of what we're doing. And if we hear that, we want to continue with the design. Justin and his team are, are working hard. We would submit, I think by the 23rd of uh, April, the uh, plans and the uh, latest elevations and all. Um, we are planning with Dennis's help the community outreach, we're going to uh, send letters out to the area um, for their input. And uh, Dennis and I are available to answer additional questions if you have them. And then afterwards, as the mayor mentioned, we do want to mention a few words about the uh, Normandy and Crooks project as well. So with that, any comments or questions, we're here to help. We'll start with Ms. Mullally, then move down to Mr. Poulton. Um, so I was wondering uh, what kind of, um, you know, bike amenities are you planning for? Well, we're going to have bike racks, aren't we, Justin? Yes, we will. And, and uh, we're going to have them in the front and in the back. So uh, we're going to offer that. We, our project in Troy also has bike racks, so that's the new thing. And that's in the downtown Troy area, so it's also an area of biking. Mr. Paulton. This is going to be a um, <clears throat> new project for Amber Apartments. I mean. Uh, one building with 36 studios. Is this a trend you you see? I mean, you've talked to your tenants. I mean, is this something you've seen across the country that's um, this is what people want? Well, I'll, I'll begin, and then Dennis will take over. He did a little research on this, but we we rent to young professionals mostly. It, it's not, of course, ex exclusively the demographic. And we, we find that, yes, there are many that like the big town homes with the garages, and they have two a couple roommates. They split the rent, and it's great. But then we have those that really just don't want a roommate. A and uh, as Dennis points out in the letter that he sent you, um, we're seeing that not just in, in Royal Oak and Clawson and, and Troy, we're seeing it nationally uh, in Seattle and, and uh, New York City and Boston and, and all around. So um, these units, as Dennis points out in his letter, um, fortunately the, the forward uh, thinking ordinance, the Royal Oaks Building Code, does allow studio apartments 250 square feet. These will be much more than that. Uh, I think 310 or 350, we, we covered that in the letter that Dennis wrote. And, and so they're not totally the smallest, but we, we feel that, that they will have all the amenities, washer and dryer, uh, heating and air conditioning, individually controlled, polished concrete, or, or hardwood floor, floors. Um, it will be lacking nothing, except it doesn't have a bedroom. It, it's a open plan concept. Let's talk about the, the parking a little bit, because mm -hmm. obviously, the, as presented, we would be basically taking the parking ordinance and then cutting it in half. You need a variance for twice the amount of spots that you're providing. Is there going to be anything within your leasing requirements, I mean, that would limit, let's say, for example, a young couple who want to live together who may theoretically own two cars, and that's going to throw your parking out of whack, you know, rather quickly? Well, as Dennis indicated in his letter, we, we intend to rent studio apartments to one person. That's our current um, policy in our company, and we will restrict only one person may live in this apartment. And with that, one car works, and, and we've seen in our properties in Clawson and Troy, where we have uh, studio apartments, we, we have some in Royal Oak as well, um, their ordinance actually does allow one parking space for a studio apartment. So, so we think it works. Dennis? Yeah, I, I think Jerry, uh, Jerry spoke to, to that uh, issue. Most of the surrounding communities, with respect to efficiencies or studio, how they define them in the ordinance, is one parking space per unit. So we would be uh, exceeding that. You know, one thing I, I want to add, kind of a, a, 
a big picture item? There's one, been one undeniable truth in the last 20 years in southeastern Michigan. Every housing trend, Royal Oak has led the way. When nobody was doing condos, we did them. We did it down at 696 in Woodward, Bernie Gleberman and Crosswinds. And his team will tell you, they then took that to at least 15 to 20 other communities. Once they happened here, everybody wanted it. And it just flew. And that had never been really done in southeastern Michigan, except perhaps maybe in Birmingham. Okay, very Tony uh, neighborhoods, uh, but never in what you would call more of a middle class market, uh, upscale market, and we did. Then the next thing that Royal Oak did is nobody except a few other communities was interested in downtown living. And we went that route and we led the way. And as soon as Royal Oak did it, it happened everywhere else. Happened in Northville, happened in Plymouth, happened in a lot of other communities. Yeah. So once again, what we're proposing is something that's a little cutting edge. It's happening on the coast, it's happening in Chicago, D.C., places in between. And that's supported, and I urge you to go look at that study. If you have any doubts, this is for real. This is not, a, this is not gonna be you know, a one-off and it's gonna last a couple years and be gone. There's a lot of reasons, as I spelled out. I thought the most humorous one was that you know, millennials don't want to live with anybody. And I'm hoping my daughter's listening because she's graduating in a couple of weeks and she's got to move back home. And we love you, honey, but you know, maybe they'll be in an apartment <laughs> for her. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have. She can move in next to my Exactly, yeah, exactly. No, we'd love to have Katie for as long as she wants to stay. But the point is that study. You did all the mics on, right? Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, and my wife's already. But I know my wife's not watching because she's watching a Tiger game. So, but one of, her, one of our friends will call. But the point is, is that my prediction is this is something that's on its way. We have another proposal in its infancy uh, nearby that's a little bit larger because of their zoning ordinance, but it basically comes down to this. Um, a lot of folks, it's just not millennials, don't have as much stuff. And if they do, they can go to a storage unit. They don't need to pay a high rate for closet space for something. They can go pay $25 a month for a storage unit and keep everything they need or their seasonal needs off site. Uh, number two, uh, they want, people want to be near within walking or biking distance of downtown, of, a, of an active downtown. And the other thing is today, especially among the young people, this study showed, and it's the Urban Land Institute, so that's, you know, that's the gold standard in, in terms of real estate review and studies, is that you and I, when we were growing up, we'd find a job and move close to it. Totally different world now. You find a place you want to live, and then you find the job. That's what, isn't that the truth? So, so that's really what's happening. So I, my prediction is with, with your approval uh, and the city commission with the conditional rezoning request that we're, we're, we're gonna put in uh, right away, uh, I believe that this is gonna be a, a next trend that we're going to see. And it's not what most people think, you know, somebody just trying to shove as many possible units for as cheap the cost as Mr. Ambers just described. These are gonna have all the amenities, albeit on a smaller basis, that you would have in any other apartment complex, but it's really meeting the market and meeting what individuals want as opposed to somebody just trying to shoehorn as many possible on a site. And the one good thing for the neighbors, when you have a traditional apartment, people can invite a lot of friends over and have a party. Here, 300 square feet, Maybe a party of two. Party's downtown. Yeah, that's it. The party's party the party's somewhere else, right? Yeah. It's either downtown or one of our other fine restaurants or something like that. So I really think big picture, there's a real opportunity here for for Royal Oak once again to be on the leading front of these housing options because that's really what it's all about. Everybody talks about the housing options for seniors, and I'm going through that with uh, my mom, and I know others have gone through with that. And there's various levels, but we don't think about the other end. And quite frankly. We love and respect all of our seniors who've lived in this community, and we want to provide options for them to stay in the community that they, they raise their families in. But we also want to attract younger people, and there's definitive studies that have been done in the past that show if people rent in a community and they like it, they generally buy a house here. So when, when the right time comes. So I think we'll be attracting, you know, the next generation of homeowners also, uh, as long as their jobs don't move them to, you know, Palo Alto or Washington, D.C. or San Francisco. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Um, 
even though you say there'll be one space per unit right. um, with the people that you're attracting to live here, I know if I had one, I would be having a lot of friends over to meet there to go downtown, and there's only four visitor spots. So right. how, and I can just picture like the streets lining up with cars of that being the place to meet because yeah, it's only a 10 block walk for. Right. Well, first of all, a lot of folks, depending on it, um, may not come. They may say, we'll meet you down there, or somebody might pick up uh, folks. Traditionally, in apartments, and Jerry can speak to this more, if you drive by any Amber apartment, let's say drive by the one at Normandy and Crooks, and I have at like six or seven in the morning, when you think most people are still there, there's plenty of parking spots available. There's people who are out of town. There's some people who don't, especially in this instance, we anticipate that we'll have a healthy percentage that won't even have cars because they can walk or bike to work or however public transportation to work and they'll do an uber if they need it or whatever other arrangement if they need a car so i we're not con we're, we're 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 based upon past experience with uh the amber apartments we don't see that as being a difficulty and i don't think we have that in your, your um, if you could talk about this facility on sherman drive because that's yeah. that's one that we're right on top Th of the neighborhood and we, we the have, mayor uh, may, may remember parking. we were concerned about possibly not having adequate parking uh, though we we did meet the the codes there were no variances and we did an overflow parking area the overflow parking area that we're pleased we have is never used it's a picnic area now. it's a picnic area exactly <laughs> so so we think we have adequate parking to support the, uh, the studio apartments we do I also want to say I think it's a really cool idea, and I, I wish they would have been around a few years ago because I definitely would have been interested. <laughs> I've always said we need updated affordable apartments for younger people, so I think it would be really cool. Mayor Olson. Only adding on to that, I mean, I, I've got a 22-year-old son at home that just graduated from college who spent four years living in a dorm. He loved it. This is the kind of thing that would be perfect for him. He doesn't entertain a lot. He doesn't have a lot of people coming over. It would be like moving back into a, a dorm. And he, his own dorm. His own dorm. It's, I, I, I think, you know, we were talking about how we're going to fill this. Then we're going to get Dennis's daughter in there and my son in there. And we, yeah, all of us wearing lokers are going to throw our surplus kids at this place. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I guess the question of priorities, too, with millennials, and one of the things that was pointed out in the study is that, unfortunately, some millennials, they have, they have good jobs, but they're carrying a little more debt from college or perhaps graduate school, and so they have different priorities, and they'd rather have that money. Rather than buy up or rent a big place, they'd rather pay that debt down, which in the long term is the smartest thing. Pay, pay, you know, pay a little bit less, uh, have a little bit uh, less space, but being able to pay their debt down is very important. Have you set the price point yet? Where are these? Well, the uh, the true answer is what will the market uh, yeah. support? Just a guess. I'm not. I, I would say it'll be within the 800 to 1,000 okay. uh, range each month, each unit. Maybe the upper level will be the most because they have the loft. Yeah. Um, the smaller units less. Um, a couple other points. And then we'll sort, certainly, if there are any other questions, um, only 22% lot coverage. I think that's an important point. So there was an issue of, well, it, that many units. But typically, in apartment construction, we have roughly 30% lot coverage. This is 22%. So there's still uh, plenty of uh, area that is not a building. Um, and we do have the other topic we'd like to take up with you. but. Certainly, if there are any other questions of the building, we want to proceed with the design. Well, I mean, I, I think you came here with with a goal of trying to get some direction yeah. from us. Okay, so so before we go on to the next one, sure. let's talk about this. Uh, th things I'm looking, I'm looking at the elevation right now, and, and what I'm seeing is is pretty much a downscaled version of what we're seeing farther to the west with the uh, with the condos out there, the the marketplace. Condo. So, so uh, all uh, that's not meant as any kind of critique or anything. I'm simply saying, the 11 mile stretch has already seen this type of massing, and 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 it is familiar with it. Oh, this is smaller, and and but it, as far as the visual aspect of it, it's still the same type of, of environment. So it's not like we're setting any precedent here. Um, I I think your your concept of of attracting um, to the singles that want to live alone. I think. 
there are a lot of those people out there. They, they don't want to have to worry about what the roommate's going to be doing to the apartment. They want to, you know, be in charge of their own space. And I think, you know, they're willing to move into a space like this. And, and I go, you know, I speak to my son, even though he's 22 years old, he doesn't drive, he doesn't have a car, he doesn't need it, he walks everywhere he goes. So, you know, something like this would be perfect for that type of individual. So, um, as, as far as, you know, the height, we're, we're a little bit higher than what the code involves, but we're also fronting again on 11 mile road where we already have some buildings that are that high you know at, at the other end of the street so i'm not seeing a major issue I, I i'm really kind of excited about the idea and as dennis said i mean we have always been on the on the forefront of trying something new and so uh, i i like to, you know, sit, when this comes back in front of us i, I like the concept maybe details to work out, but I'm not seeing where I'm going to instruct you to try to change anything that's, that's causing me any heartburn. Ms. Varley, Mr. Casada. Yeah, I, I like this plan a lot. I think it's great. I think it's well needed. Um, we've lost a couple of millennials in our family to Seattle, so we're desperately trying to get them back. Um, one of the, my comments would be, how green are you willing to go with your, your new building? I mean, we all know millennials now are you know, on the green scene, and they're really uh, environmentally conscious. So I just want to know, you don't have to answer tonight, but I def definitely want to express my, my thoughts on, let's see how green we can go and how impressive this can be for our community. I, I just want to clarify some things, and this is not a criticism. I just want to make sure I have it clear. You, you have here these units. You, you answered one of the questions. I was going to ask if there's any storage on site. Or any, it was there planned to be a basement? You answered the question. If they want storage for seasonal stuff, they want to put their bike away for the winter, generally you're going to expect that they're going to have off-site storage. Yes, there, there is a patio. Each apartment has a patio or balcony. There will be many people in the winter that winter their bikes on their balconies. We see that at our other properties. Um, but um, all the storage is within the unit itself. Okay, and there's no elevators here. This is the second and third floor you access by staircase. Correct. On the ends, and the and the heating and cooling has unit ventilators. Is that what you're planning? Or? Well, we haven't done the engineering yet, but there'll be individual. Each Each unit will have heating and cooling controlled by the tenant of that unit. Okay, the, the picture sort of indicated that there might be a unit ventilator under the window there, I don't well, know. Well, it's a concept. Mm -hmm. So we haven't engineered the heating and cooling. <clears throat> it's something we're looking at. All right. That's, uh, and, and, and again, this is not a criticism, but it's like a nice motel, <laughs> in a way, that's your own room, right? <laughs> I mean, that's how it's built. No elevators, well, no anything. It has a full kitchen, full bathroom, um, dishwasher, microwave, I mean, mm -hmm. It's more yeah, than that. It wasn't a criticism. I'm just yeah. trying to get the concept down. It, it, am I correct in assuming, looking at the drawing here, the first floor is ADA compliant? Yes. yes. All Type B units except one is a Type A unit, okay. correct? One more question. Um, regarding the storage, I know where I live, it's um, they have rules about what you can and cannot put on your balcony. Yes. And because it's on 11 Mile, do, are you guys going to have something well, in the lease that they we, can? We do, have, we do have that in our house rules now, okay. that we have many apartments with balconies. But we, we try to limit it to things like bicycles and charcoal grills and that sort of thing. Not clutter, not, not trash, not debris, not rubbish. I, I just wanted to address one issue. Uh, and that is the uh, comparison with the motel and, and this facility, just so we don't get, <laughs> and, and, and I know that was said in, in the correct spirit, but the, the big difference here is that, um, and one of the reasons you know that the Amber properties are kept up very well is they are rigorous in their financial review and assessment of people. If you cannot afford this, if you're unemployed, you won't be rented to. I mean, they have very strict standards. So they're going to enter into a lease, which is a big commitment, as opposed to a motel. It's, you know, you come and go whenever you want. Uh, in terms of size, there may be some uh, uh, equivalency, perhaps, but the reality is these are much more upscale units. Uh, you know, in New York, uh, they have micro apartments, which are smaller and don't have these amenities. They're shared amenities, and that's uh, not something the Ambers are interested in doing. I think each person has to have the full complement of, of amenities, and that's what they're committed to in each unit. I understand what you're yeah. saying. We lawyers know how important client selection is. Right. Same deal. Exactly. There you go. There you go. I think the dorms is a better, better, uh, better uh, uh, comparison. Mayor Elson. Yeah. 
are these units going to have in in unit uh, laundry facilities? Yes. Okay. Any other questions for the petitioner no. at this point, Mr. Twing? Any further clarification that you're looking for? Or? No. If you had major objections, I think we both wanted to know if you had issues with the density or the parking, because this will be one of the first projects that you would consider one space per unit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There have been a few where you've gone to one and a half, but you haven't really gone down to one per unit. Of course, we haven't had studio units really either as the primary activity, but. I'm assuming this will be public hearing noticed. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's gonna, you guys they're going to have to select, gonna reach select which neighbors. zoning. Because yeah. Yeah. it's going to be a rezoning to <coughs> some district, and I don't know, we haven't chosen or discussed that totally yet. Right. We've been looking at uh, well, the ones that allow multifamily are obviously the multifamily and then mixed use one and two, but Tim has shared that there are several multifamilies already on 11 miles, so that may be the route that, that we go. But I do want to commit that we will have a meeting with the neighbors and the traditional, what Mr. Amber has done is uh, following when the postcard goes out from uh, Mr. Thwing's department, then we'll send out a letter inviting them to a location about a week beforehand so we can walk through in great detail so that those who can make it are prepared and understand because, you know, we all know and it's understandable when there's change, you have a vacant piece of property and then there's going to be something put there. People are generally want to find out what is going on and we're more than willing and have in the past met. In fact, I will tell you that on Sherman Drive probably was the most productive meeting we ever had. All the neighbors had a, um, you know, suggestions and some of them were incorporated. And then one of the things they said is, can you do anything about that house in the back, which <laughs> he eventually bought for the lot, you know, as the, as the, as the lot. So uh, I don't know how much we can do on, a, on 11 mile, but we can guarantee that it'll be well run and if there are any problems that crop up, they're going to be resolved immediately. But we'll commit to having that meeting. So, you, you, you know, the people who come here are, are as informed as they can be from our end. And you did state that our surrounding cities, Kloss and Troy, for example, have already revised their ordinances for studio apartments to only require one spot. Correct. Yes. yes. I'm kind of wondering if that's something we need to possibly think about in the future. Mr. Casado. Well, my qu I was going to ask that question is that in Mr. Cowan's letter, he said that the lease will have a provision that says, yes. thou shalt have only one car. And I just wondered, does that, does that matter to doing the parking review? Well, I, I think we're probably going to end up with a request for a conditional rezoning to yep. multifamily so that the non-compliance issues can de get dealt with through the rezoning. And one of the conditions they may have just offered is putting that in their requirement or their yes. lease. Okay. Yeah. So. We're, we're willing to do that. Uh, we, we've talked about that and that if we could put as a condition of the of rezoning that we could put in that we will only lease what would be permitted one car and that will be for per unit that will be in the lease. And, you know, it's not unusual. We don't see it here th that often, but... Um, I mean, I lived in Boston, and, and people used to rent their two-car garages out to, you know, all kinds of people so that they could uh, have a place for their car. Uh, that won't happen on site, but that could happen somewhere else here. <laughs> okay. I, don't, I think we're pretty much set on that. I don't. Well, thank you. Could, could we touch on just the Normandy and Crooks issue just to, to give you, just real quickly, because I know you've, you've been here a while. Um, the plan, mm -hmm. Dennis, is available oh, you got it on, on the screen. screen. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so just, just, yeah, uh, just, just some quick background. You might remember there was a house on the corner. Uh, that house was in bankruptcy in another state in Wisconsin. Uh, Mr. Amber had to go through a lot of work just to find out who owned it. He worked through the system and with the bankruptcy trustee and bought the house uh, through that process, through, uh, through the sale there, and then um, was able to demolish the house immediately. Uh, the neighbors were extremely happy because that had really fallen into disrepair, and I won't go into all the details uh, on public television here of how bad it was, but we did a, Mr. Amber, I think, did a public service by getting rid of that house. It then turned out that the, uh, uh, the family to the south that owned the home after the longtime resident had passed away that decided to sell also, and we kind of were very fortunate and we were able to reach an agreement with them on the sale of that property. So this 
this uh, piece of property that you see lines up in terms of the east-west dimensions exactly with the amber uh, facility to the south. And so uh, Jerry just wants to give you a few more details. So thank you, Dennis. Yes, that is correct. The uh, I would just call this afternoon the closing on the house on Normandy, 1717 Normandy is Friday. So um, we will then own the parcel in, in its entirety. This was sort of in the back of our mind back when we did the Amber Landing Project, uh, which we finished early in 2014. And uh, we now plan to finish the site with 11 town homes. These are the complete opposite of the studio apartments, where these are two bedroom, two and a half bath, a uh, two-car garage with uh, frontage facing Normandy. And uh, this, I think, in the planning parlance is a natural extension of the property to the south, which has the Amber Landing project on it. And currently, the, the property that we're talking about is zoned single family. So Dennis and I are uh, thinking this is a conditional rezoning as well to multifamily, we would meet uh, all the requirements, lot coverage even, uh, when you look at the site on a combined basis. And uh, parking is met, it's inside, there's parking in the back, that would be the visitor spaces. And um, we would like any input that you may have um, as we go forward because this is, is something we wanna uh, march ahead with. Well, to real briefly, just if I could add to it, and we didn't do a staff report on it because it, it was coming in late, but it, it is zoned one family residential. The property to the south is multifamily, as are several of them to the south as you go along Crooks Road. To the west is uh, one family residential. Um, they are on the plan proposing 11 units. Uh, the site plan has 28 parking spaces, either in the garages or uh, parallel uh, along the south property line. So they're providing more than the 22 that would be required. Uh, the building is a foot higher as depicted uh, than the 30 foot limit. Uh, the density, uh, again, if you apply the multifamily started uh, uh, requirement, it would allow six units, they're proposing 11. Um, then there are, the only setback that I see that might be that you'd have to deal with uh, would be the one off Normandy, which is currently depicted at 10 feet. All the others exceed the 25 foot requirement, so I don't, I don't see those as an issue at the present time. That's kind of a synopsis on a, on a five minute review to give you kind of uh, the issues. <coughs> Any questions on this one? I'm oh, sorry. Mayor Allison. Um, looking at the elevations I've got in front of me, it looks like it's going to be the, um, uh, uh, typically, is it going to be the corrugated metal and the uh, burnished block? And Well, it, it, we want it to look like an amber building. That's exactly. That's why I just want to verify. On elevation, we decided we would go all brick with the accent brick. So if you'll notice, yes. we are alternating. We have the indented and the outdented units, and we are trying to create interest and also privacy of the patios uh, and balconies that would be within the indented area. Um, so right now, we're thinking a reddish brick on the outdented units and a brownish brick on the indented units. And on the rear elevation, if you turn the page, we're going to have more metal above the garage. But we, we, we were putting putting forth brick on the front facade. What are you proposing between the upper and the lower windows? Looks like you've got some kind of... It's a metal panel. That's a metal panel. Okay. Um, and, and I see you, you've addressed one of the questions I gave you a week or so ago about the, the ends. You've got... Yeah, we're trying to create a little interest there on uh, Crooks Road. Mm -hmm. We also um, want to respect the fact that the units face Normandy. Mm -hmm. The frontage is Normandy. Yes. And, and so that's where the doors are. Is this going to be mirrored then on the west elevation as well? End elevation? Yeah, both, yes. this is both ele end elevations. Okay. That was the thought. Can you show an end elevation? I don't think I have one on the screen. Have one? Oh, it's only in there. It was in the packet. Oh, yeah. All right, I, gotcha. I don't okay. have one. I'm on sorry. Well, I have it. There he's got it. Awesome. Oh. 
two, two small points, if I could. Uh, first, Tim oh, is this. absolutely Thank correct. You, this is the last non-resident, this is the last residential, single family residential piece left in the strip, all the way from 13 Mile. So this will be completely multifamily, and I think there's one senior living facility, the Charles, Charles the yeah, the Charter that's, or, in that, that's in that strip. Mm -hmm. So this will kind of complete um, this corner. The other thing I want, want you to know is, according to Mr. Amber, because I asked him this several times in the past couple of weeks, we have not had any complaints from our surrounding, our residential neighbors to the back of the facility, the lofts that was built two years ago. So we didn't anticipate any, but I just want to let you know that, that uh, there have been no complaints that we've received, nor that we know of even at the city, about the facility that we have. So I think there's been a more peaceful coexistence, and uh, quite frankly, I believe most of the neighbors uh, from the ones that Mr. Ambers talked to are really happy about the fact that that house is gone. And the, the one house that was there, if you're familiar with it, it's, it's a very small house, so we're not, we're not going to be knocking down that house, which is in relatively good order, but it is a very small house. So I don't think we're going to be taking away too much by having that house demolished and then replaced with the 11 units. I, I think, Jerry, I think I've asked you this before. I know that there's a number of amber developments right at the end of Lexington. That's the other side of the family, is that? Are those yes, uh, okay. it goes back 25 years, but yeah. yes. Uh, more opposite the high school on yeah. Chester Road, yes. That My goes back to your, your father, your father and uncle's generation. Down, yeah. But uh, we do not operate Okay. Yeah. Anybody else want any comments on this one? Okay. Okay. Well, that'll be this one will be coming before you soon then also I don't know what our timetable 23rd is. of April is our submittal so we'll get both of these uh, before you we appreciate your time uh, we know you got a lot of things going on and but we had unique circumstances particularly with the property at 11 mile and we'll start moving forward and I hope uh, this sets a tone for the spring here in Royal Oak uh, that uh, there are those uh, in the community that are bullish on their investment and uh, nobody's greater than the Amber family in the investment they've shown in the last several years. I think they've invested, invested as much as anybody in the community. No argument. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. So that moves us on to... I think everybody had an opportunity yeah. to read those over. If there's any questions for Mr. Twing on those. I think they're all good. And then the final item is the notice of master plan adoption for the city of Pleasant Ridge. Anything you want to add to that, Mr. Twing? Nope. Congratulations, Pleasant Ridge. Pleasant Ridge. <laughs> We are looking for the mystery motion from our newest member. I would point out before you adjourn, <laughs> I would point out before you adjourn, your May meeting is scheduled for your training session. We don't have anything else on that evening. What, what we, what's planning commission training, we're bringing outside. Yeah, and I understand, I've got, I've got a conflict it's one of those weeks in May, so May 12th. I, uh, my question was, would you want to start earlier than the normal 7.30 start time? Or do you want to well, start it's going to be as a training workshop? That's all it's going to be as a no training. items. Okay. Will it be here? Yes. And then how long will it be? I haven't. We haven't really said it yet, but I mean, I, I imagine it's going to be a couple hours. Okay. You know, if it's just if we haven't got any items on the agenda, then, then fine. Let's just set it at seven thirty. And is it at seven thirty? Or do you want it at earlier? Or I said we might have it off. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. fine. Whatever. Seven. 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 Six thirty. Seven. If they were taking a vote, I vote seven. looking for a consensus. <laughs> <laughs> I vote for seven. Seven. Seven it is. Right. Seven, seven, seven it is. Okay. okay. All right. With that being said, move to adjourn. I move. Oh, okay. Oh, you <laughs> oh, 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 oh. He said he was oh, looking oh, for oh, it. For, oh, from our I, I didn't hear anything over here, so. Yeah, then nothing happened. I move mm -hmm. to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Support. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Too late. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank <laughs> you.